Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another resin video. So today I'm showing you how to use this adorable butterfly themed silicone mold to make a fun trinket box. So these little trinket boxes is just a fun name for a jar of any kind that has a lid. You can put um, Q-tips in them, you can put hair ties in them, you can put candy in them. Don't eat the resin, but you can eat the candy. Um, and this one has an adorable butterfly top. So I did a crown one recently and I included it in my new resin for beginners course because that mold was the most difficult mold I've ever had to unmold in my life. And so I included it in my how to remove pieces from difficult silicone molds tutorial. So I was a little worried about this guy being difficult. And while he wasn't easy, he was not nearly as hard as the crown mold. So we're going to go ahead, get started. I'll show you the entire process. And then at the end, we will give you some close, fun, up close shots of the butterfly. He's so cute. I just want to make this entire mold with like a bunch of different colors now. Let's get started. All right, y'all, so we are going to start by mixing our resin. I've already poured it into one of our mixing bowls, mixing cups. This is a thick set epoxy by Total Boat, and it is a deep pour epoxy because I'm mixing several pieces, and I want to be bubble free. And you can make your pieces, um, any of these really, with either the deep pour or maker epoxy, depending on how many layers you want to do. So if you are looking to do one layer, the thick set here that can be poured up to two inches deep at a time is perfect. If you don't mind doing two layers, then the maker epoxy, um, which is a one to one ratio is perfect. So this is a three to one ratio, which means of the thousand liters I'm mixing, I did 750 of the A and 250 of the B. For the maker epoxy, Here's that. It is a one to one ratio, which means one part A, one part B, 50 50. Either way, we're going to mix our resin according to the instructions. So for thick set, that is three minutes in one cup, three minutes in the next. Then we will add our colorants. And I find that if you're mixing several pieces, making several pieces, it's easier to make one big batch of resin and then separate it out in smaller cups according to what colors you're looking for than to mix each color individually. So for this very first basic piece that we're going to do, we are just going to use these amazing iridescent flakes. They're fabulous. They stay suspended. They look great. They're a very easy beginner level material that gives you a lot of bang for your buck. They look amazing. All right, so now that we've got our resin mixed up, I've got about 100 milliliters left from another project. And we're going to start on our butterfly box. So we'll see how far this goes. Might need some more resin, but I'm going to start by pouring in a thin stream from high up. And we want to get all the way down into that butterfly as much as possible. Perfect. Make sure to go all the way up to the very top. That looks about right. You want it to go right up to the very edge without going over. And then pop everything with your heat gun. All right, let's use what's left in the bottom of the container. So you can see for the bottom mold, we have quite a few designs, but the overall piece is just a cylinder. So everything that we put in is going to fall down the sides here. 
Let's go ahead and scrape this in. I do like these iridescent flakes because they tend to stay suspended, whereas um, glitter does not. So let's go ahead and add a bit more resin, a bit more flakes. We're just going to do another 100 milliliters of resin and see um, how much resin this mold takes. I'm not 100% sure. I'm, I'm leaning more towards 200, but with the sides being so thin, I'm just not sure. The crown mold that I did took about 400 milliliters total for the entire box, entire crown trinket box. So this butterfly box is a smaller mold. We'll find out if it takes 400 as well or if it takes less. All right, go in a thin stream. Oh, it's getting up to the top. That's at the top. So there you go, about maybe 250, because we did have a little bit. No, we had 100, we put 100 in there and what was left over in here, so 200. I am going to add just a little smidge of clear to the top because it's not quite at the edge here. Don't feel the need to mix the flakes into that. There we go, right up to the tippy top. Perfect. And some of these errant flakes to that clear. Might as well use them. Use them or lose them, right? Not sure that's what that saying's about, but. All right, we're going to go ahead and let this cure for 24 to 48 hours, and then I will come back and unmold it for you. Um, I think that butterfly is going to be interesting to unmold. If it's anything like the crown trinket box, that was the hardest thing I've ever unmolded, so it'll be interesting to see how this one does. These, This mold does not go over and encompass the pieces quite like the crown did, so... Cross your fingers. We'll see y'all tomorrow. All right, so these are all cured. So we're going to start with our bigger piece by pulling, there we go, pulling that silicone away from the sides and introducing air. This piece is going to be interesting to demold because it literally goes all the way down and then all the way inside. And so our actual piece in here is fairly thin. Fine with these pieces, it's almost easiest to roll. You gotta get that started. Once you do, it's usually the easiest way to do it. Now keep on working it down. Stay in the camera. Oh, it has butterflies on the side too. I didn't realize that. That's gonna be cute. All right, there we go. Dun, da, da, da. So the inside now is fairly easy. We're just going to squeeze together, introduce as much air as possible, and then twist. There we go. One cup made of resin. Oh, this is so cute. And I like that all the flakes are around the butterflies. Dun, 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 dun. So now our silicone mold is one giant cup. Uh, we can put it back together, make another one. Oh, 
There we go. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. So now we have the harder part. And I'm not sure how hard this piece is going to be. This is not fully encased. A little bit of resin that drips down the side. Let's get rid of that. And we're going to start again by pulling it back from the sides. There we go. That's not hard. And once we get the whole top out here, we're going to be careful of the butterfly. But we're going to have to start pulling and introducing air around the wings. And this is going to be the hard part. It's getting a finger or something up in here to release the butterfly. Come on. Release, butterfly, release. You're not really going to tear or pull the silicone out of shape, but you know. There we go. Once you create a little space, make sure you get a finger or something in there to keep the space. Pull until it's off. <laughs> so now let's see, but there should be a little lip here where this just, oh yeah, fits on perfectly. And while the top is all the flakes, the sides <laughs> go down from there. This is so cute, you guys. I feel like this would be perfect for like hair ties or bobby pins or like hair accessories for a little girl. I will probably put some kind of glitter or sparkles in it for craft piece things. But let's go ahead and I will give you guys some close ups. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I really like how this guy turned out. And as you may have noticed, I have dropped the lid at least three times now, um, trying to show you guys the underside of the jar. No other reason to turn it over. And he's very durable. He has not cracked or broken or had any problems. So that is always the sign of a successful resin pour is if you can drop it and have it not be damaged in any way. So. Either way, I hope you liked this project. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, show your friends, tell your mom. I will be back with another resin project or something else. I'm always doing something before you know it. Bye, y'all.